All right, it's raining out, so let me answer a few more questions. How hard or easy was it to move to South America, and is it possible for anyone to do it? I wouldn't say it's hard. Like, moving to another country is a pain in the butt to get residency, because you have to do all this stupid paperwork and pay the fees to get the paperwork done, and it's just super irritating. But I wouldn't say it's necessarily hard. Is it possible for anyone to do it? I don't know, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it depends what you mean by that. Like, in certain philosophical ways, it's only possible for you to do whatever you're going to do. So in that case, it's not possible. But, I mean, theoretically, yeah, anyone can do it. Why did you block comments for so long? What made you open them back up? Uh, okay. I feel like I've answered this like 20 times already. But in a nutshell, the comments were becoming quite a negative sea of scum and villainy. And I'm trying to put out a, a pretty positive message here. And then when the page is full of all this anger and hatred and resentment and negativity from the comments, well, that's kind of messing up my message. So I, I turned them off. And then after a while, I was like, well, maybe the trolls have gotten bored of not being able to comment and they're off doing something else. And the comments have been pretty good lately. But, you know, at some point in the next few months or years or whatever, if they get horrible again, then I'll just turn it off again. Okay, <clears throat> why did I choose Panama and not Costa Rica or Belize or... Okay, um, let me just see. Okay, one of the big things is hurricanes. There's no hurricanes in Panama. Belize and Costa Rica get hurricanes. But Panama, I mean, the last hurricane was something like 70 years ago. Um, so that was a huge selling point. Another thing is... A lot, a lot, a lot of people are already going to Costa Rica. And I didn't want to just go somewhere where it was going to be all gringos bringing their... There's nothing against gringos or anything, but when you get a huge concentration of, you know, expats, they kind of congeal together and don't interact with the, the existing culture. And, and I didn't really want that. I wanted to have kind of a more mixed cultural experience. But yeah, probably the biggest thing was uh, hurricanes. That, and the, it looked like online anyway, there were a lot of islands for sale in Panama. And it turns out there are. Um, I'm just going to verbally fix the grammar here. I want to move to Panama and start an off-grid homestead. How did you find cheap land? I've been searching for a couple of weeks now and can't find much good stuff. Price range ten to twenty thousand dollars. Love your content, very inspiring. Okay. Uh, well, if you're if you're, how are you searching for land? If you mean like sitting on your butt and looking at a screen, that's not very effective. Uh, I spent a year actually in Panama before I found some good stuff. So, I mean, just as a general thing, if you want to move somewhere and buy land there, I recommend going to that place like in person, not trying to do it through the internet. Like actually go there and, you know, rent some place for a few months or something or just, just somehow be there and interact with people. And you'll find that real life has a lot more opportunities than the internet does. What's the ultimate goal for your current island? I don't know. I don't really have an ultimate goal. I don't know if any of my stuff has ultimate goals and just make everything better as they go. There isn't really an end point to anything until I'm dead. And when I'm dead, I just want to, like, leave a bunch of good stuff behind. But yeah, I don't really have ultimate goals, I guess. Are you familiar with the various mechanisms that can be used to make a paddle wheel with the paddles to always stay vertical? He's got a link for me here. Hold all right, let's see what we've got here. Just off the top of my head, this looks horribly inefficient. Okay, so you got this rotating thing. And this paddle paddle is in the water. And as it's coming down, it's not moving that way very much. It's not moving that way very much. It's mostly moving down. That means it's coming into the water almost, almost not moving. That means it's going to have a braking action. Oops. And then as the as the paddle gets to this middle part, it's moving fast, right? 
but then as it comes back out here it's going to slow down again so you have a paddle going in that moves slow then fast and slow so you're going to have a braking action as it's going in and out of the water and it would be much more efficient if these paddles were just connected solid not with the rotatey thing at least that's what it looks like to me so I, I guess no I've not considered building one when I was living in Panama in the 80s, there was a Cayman issue. Do you have any problems with them on the island? I actually have not seen a single Cayman. I know they exist because one of my neighbors said he found one and it's and most of it's attached to his shed right now. But yeah, I haven't seen any. And they don't, they don't grow that big, so I'm not super worried about them. First of all, you're an inspiration? Oh, thanks. Um, my question, okay. What do you think of Elon Musk and his mission to make the world a better place? Oh, great. All right. <clears throat> Honestly, I'm a little wary of Elon Musk. There, there are a bunch of reasons. Let me, let me give one. Okay, he wants to make self-driving cars as if, as if human beings need less stuff to do, right? We already, we already just sit around and do nothing most of the time anyway. Like, so now we'll get into our car and sit there and do nothing? I don't, I don't think doing less stuff is what, we, is what the human race needs. I think we need to start doing more stuff. We need more to do. We need to be more engaged with the world and with life. The other problem with a self-driving car is it just takes away your freedom. Then, you know, you just sit in your house, and then you sit in your car, and your car drives you places, and you don't, you don't, you're giving up control over, like, freedom over your own destiny over your own life in that situation and he's you know getting people all excited about just being able to sit there in a the car and oh look I can do nothing and just drives me around and now I can go to my house and just watch TV and then sit in my car and do nothing and then go home and do nothing go to work and do nothing like there's too much do nothing going on um I'm gonna leave it at that I, th I think he's I think I think he does have some good ideas but i think he's he has a he has a significant philosophical difference from me okay this is a question about my like how do i learn things like have i studied or oh okay, myself taught okay. um most of everything i've learned is is self taught you know i went to school and tried that and i also have tried you know, asking people things, doing online research, researching in books, all, all kinds of different stuff. But my favorite way to do things is to just think about something in my head, maybe look up a few bits of information that I need, and then just start trying things. And I find that also gets me the best end results. It doesn't necessarily get me to a good result the fastest, but it, it generally gets me to the best end result. And I learn a lot more that way. That's one of the reasons I like it. So when I'm trying things, I don't, I don't even necessarily try what I think is going to work right away. A lot of times I'll try things that I think probably won't work, but I'm going to learn a lot in the, in the process of, of whatever that is. And then, you know, sometimes unexpected things do work, and that, that's cool. Then I learn a lot from that. And uh, it also depends how much time I have. Like if I really need to get something to work right away, I'll just do what I think is going to work like the safest choice but other than that I like to experiment and just learn as much as I can just on my own and I, I also you know talk to other people and get ideas from them from time to time <clears throat> okay do you and Deshana have the typical man does the building woman does the housewife stuff or like how do we split up chores okay uh, this is gonna sound terrible but <laughs> Like, I'm a very motivated person, and Deshaina is kind of, like, not super motivated. So, in a nutshell, anything she's willing to do, I tell her she has to do it. And then I do everything else. And it, it ends up being that I do most of the, you know, the man stuff. She does most of the woman stuff. Um, like, she does most of the cooking. But I also cook, and I like to cook, so there's a bunch of overlap. And right now... She's working on some concrete thing that she just wanted to do. And, you know, she kind of asked me if I want to do it. And I was like, no, nah, I got other stuff I got to do. So she's, she's just doing it. So, I mean, generally speaking, like, we are responsible for the, the man jobs and the woman jobs. 
But once those are taken care of, there's a lot of overlap. That covers it, right? Showed some garden stuff. Okay, what's up with the sailboat I bought? Well, it's kind of on hold right now while I'm doing some digging. Like, there's a... I just have a lot of different projects that I can work on, and the sailboat's one of them. It's just not... hasn't floated to the top of the priority list yet. But I go... I go... I go in the sailboat and just think and stare at it once in a while. And at some point, I'm just going to get this, like, inspiration. I'm going to be like, ah, now I know what to do, and then I'm going to... I don't know. Something. What advice do you have for someone who is interested in everything and cannot stick to one thing? Well, if you cannot stick to one thing and you're trying, that's just a problem you have to figure out. But um, like a jack of all trades, as soon as I find something inter interesting, I get obsessive for a few months, learn a ton really fast. Then as soon as I'm moderately good, knowledgeable about the said, to said topic, I move on to something else. Okay. <clears throat> I think... You know, going back to what I was saying about the Elon Musk thing, I think this is a problem of people not having anything to do. So if you're just going around learning things just to learn something, so you can move on to something else, then you can learn something else and move on to something else. This is the way I think about it. Anything you learn is only as valuable as what you do with it. So if you're just learning all this crap for no particular reason, it's all worthless. So find... Find something you want to do in life, like something that's important, that matters, that you're going to care about, and then and then do it. And then instead of just learning, learning trades or, or skills for no reason, you'll you'll learn skills to do whatever this thing is you're trying to do. So so find something that you care about, that you want to do, that preferably you're not currently able to do, and then learn skills. To figure out how to do that and then you won't have to worry about this getting you know bored of something and then moving on because you've got a purpose how much fishing do you and your family normally do any plans to make a catch and cook video I will make a mental note to try to do a catch fish and cook it video it's kind of gruesome that middle part you know when taking the taking the fish apart but whatever um, I don't know how much fishing we do it, it really depends on how busy I am and, you know, the, the girls fish too sometimes. And that just depends on how motivated they are, I guess. I mean, the, the kids aren't, the kids don't, don't do it by themselves yet, but Deshaina sometimes does. Um, and sometimes I take the kids with me. But yeah, it really just depends on how much free time I have. And right now I'm, I'm working on something really hard, so I, I'm not doing a lot of fishing. But when I have more time, yeah, I kind of I fish anywhere, anytime I'm going somewhere, I just drag a line. And catch stuff. Hey man, four or five years ago I brought to your attention yet another company that had ripped off your design patent for the robot walker. Did you ever take any legal action? Nah, I don't, I don't have time for that crap. I have things I want to do in my life. I don't want to sit in a courtroom and just fight them. Oh, what a, oh, that would suck. Um, now in terms of all right, I guess that was long ago that they may have still been selling the the robot toys that I made, which is kind of irritating. But now, at this point, the robot, there, the toy company I was working with, is no longer making the robot toys for kind of really stupid reasons. There were some screw ups, and it doesn't matter. But they're not making them anymore. So kind of at this point, if anyone's, if anyone anywhere is making them, I think that's great because <clears throat> it's a cool, cool thing. I, I hope someone's having fun with it. What's your daily schedule like? What time do you normally wake up, go to bed? I have no schedule. It's just all over the place. Depends what's going on. Yeah, it changes all the time. Like, literally no schedule. I, most of the time I don't even know what time of day it is. And often, I'm doing things based on the weather or the tides of the ocean. And those change all the time. So, yeah, no, no schedule. I don't even know what time it is right now. Oh. Okay, why don't you build a drag line dredge? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, basically this is asking why I'm not... Yeah, so I'm, I'm cleaning out a river. Why don't I just make a huge dredge that can just drag down the whole river and clean everything in? I've gotten this comment a lot, actually, lately. Oh. Um, 
basically because the amount of force that would be required I think is being underestimated by some people and then plus once I drag this mountain of material to one end then what do I do with it I need it to go somewhere not just in a giant pile like I, I need it to go specific places so you know okay maybe I can build a plow that would just and perfectly plow everything out to the side Dude, this stuff does not work as well in reality as it might in your head and it's it's kind of difficult to explain until someone has tried it so when I was a kid I had this experience where I went to my dad's house and he had dug this enormous hole beside his house to expose the basement wall so he could paint it to waterproof it. So I got there and I see this scene with this huge hole, this big mound of dirt beside it. And I'm like, hey dad, you want me to put the push that dirt back in there? And I'm a little kid, I don't, I don't know anything. And he's like, yeah, sure, go for it. And I'm thinking things kind of along the lines of this. So one of the things I tried was there's a pet, there's a fence post and then there's a mound this mound of dirt here, like huge mound of dirt, way taller than me. And I'm thinking, what if I get two sticks, wedge one against the fence post, one against a board that's against the dirt, and I can jump on this middle part and it'll push the dirt, right? Oh, no dice. The amount of force that would have been required, just incredible. So, I mean, it did not budge, not, not at all. So, if, if someone's, and now anytime I do one of these kind of big projects where it's a lot of work and it takes a while, I always get a lot of comments about like, why don't you just make a thing to just whoosh all at once, just whoosh, or just like drag like, you know, a centimeter off the top of the entire thing all at once, it'll go so much faster. First of all, like the, the amount of time it's going to take to build that thing is kind of crazy. And then what do I do with this huge thing I've built when I'm done? And, and okay, here's, here's what you have to do to get this perspective. Go out to some wilderness somewhere and get some sticks and stake out a 10 meter by 10 meter square. I'm not talking about in a manicured field. I'm talking about just in some wilderness where there's rocks and trees and sticks and all kinds of crap and the grounds uneven stake out a 10 by 10 meter square now level that area and then dig it down two meters if you accomplish that you will have a very different perspective on this entire situation what are your plans for your old boats that don't float anymore I don't have any old boats that don't float anymore. They kind of look like eyesores, in my opinion. Then go away. You, I literally do not care if you watch any of these videos at all. Please feel free to, to leave. I'm not taking them to the dump. First of all, I don't have any boats that don't float. All Didn't I just make a video about boats and showed them all and the plans and stuff? Yeah, I don't have any, I don't have any garbage boats. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, now we're starting to get into the, the dark zone of comments. Let the tools do the work. What does that mean? Your tools don't do the work for you. You have to do it. If you're just relying on your tools to do everything for you, why not, well, what's, the, what's the point of being alive? Do you just want to sit there in a chair and push a button and have a robot do everything for you? This goes back to the whole thing I said before about people have nothing to do so they're causing all kinds of trouble doing stupid things wasting resources I think we need to let the tools do less of the work I think we need to start doing more of the work and taking more more of an in, more initiative in our own existence putting more effort into it instead of just kind of sitting back and you know flipping switches and having all this stuff going on around us while we get fatter and lazier oh, it may have been more response that that guy was looking for. <laughs> oh no! Now I've got a question. There's a, this is more of a comment, but he's talking about the, the pedal car I'm making for the kids. I know you will make it child-proof. What does that mean? I'm not making it child-proof. 
too much stuff in the world is childproof. There's there's sharp stuff and stuff that can the kids could fall and get hurt on all over the place here. I think that's an important part of their environment because then they learn. They learn not to do stupid things. I'm not going to like wrap this stainless steel car in rubber so they can fall and smash their head on it and be okay. No, if they're going to fall and do dumb things and whatever, I think they should get hurt. So it's my job to teach them not to do stupid things, not to be careless and not to get dangerous. There's, there's danger in the world. You can't bubble wrap the universe <clears throat> has anyone else joined your adventure builders club uh i don't know because there's no there's no membership there's no registration there's nothing like that you you just do it like i'm not i don't have anything that says i am a member of the adventure builders club it's just a philosophy to follow and if you're following it you're in the adventure builders club unless you feel like not saying you're in the adventure builder club it's just it's not really, yeah, it's, it's just not that kind of club. It's not, the, word, the term club is kind of facetious a little bit. There's not, it's not something where you, you join and sign up and pay a fee and get a thing. No, you, you, just, you just try to do it. And if you're doing it, I guess you're in. And if you're not doing it, you're not. So I don't know what other people are doing. But hopefully there are a few people out there who are like, yeah, this adventure builder philosophy is cool. I'm going to do that too. They're in the club. <laughs>